Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of the Meta Meltdown. Today is Wednesday, June 22nd, 2016. The Meta Meltdown is your weekly 20-minute podcast about the current meta in Hearthstone. Each week we'll focus on a specific deck. This week we're focusing on Cthune Druid. And we'll provide, on, we'll provide our insights on how to pilot the deck and in order to succeed on the ladder. Whew. My name is Dominic Silver Dragon to win, and I have my co-host Nate Walter, aka Nate Diggity. How's it going, buddy? It's going great, dude. How you doing? Doing well. Thank you for asking. Uh, this week we actually don't have a guest, um, but that's probably because I'm traveling up to San Jose, uh, and yeah, so traveling, and it's been good. What about uh, you, Nate? What have you been up to? Uh, not a whole lot. Just typical work week playing some hearthstone here and there sounds good yep nothing too interesting <laughs> okay and let's go into uh decks we played this week so we both played cthulhu druid and i see that we've also both picked a warrior deck to play so uh why don't we talk about that nate sure so i have uh found my new love in dragon warrior it's actually what i used to hit legend this month so nice very good. It's actually what we'll be talking about next week. Yep. So, looking forward to that. What about you? I, I picked up Temple Warrior and I did really well with that. I think I had a six game win streak with it because Cthulhu Druid wasn't working out as well. It kind of just depends. It's a very meta uh, like list. Like you have, to, you have to pick the right matchups to play with Cthulhu Druid. Otherwise, you're not going to do so well. But right. we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, did you guys have... Oh, did you? <laughs> so used to having um, a guest here. Uh, did you do anything else besides Hit Legend? Um, yeah, I have some friends and family in town, so I haven't had a ton of time to play Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. So I just squeezed in a Legend, and that's about it. Just casually. Just <laughs> <laughs> real quick, let me get that Legend. All right. It just comes naturally. You I'm, know. Good to, I'm good to go, yeah. What about um, you? Anything outside of Hearthstone? Uh, so... I'm really sad about this. Um, so we had the Hearthstone Spring Championships Asia this past weekend. And um, the weekend before that was Europe, I believe. And they were filming it out in Torrance. And I got invited to go watch it. Um, and I thought it was going to be a two-day event. Because it was supposed to be. But then, um, so I, I would rather show up on Sunday so that you know I could see the finals. As opposed to watching you know, just the preliminaries or whatever. So I show up on Sunday... And no one's there because they actually finished it the day beforehand and they didn't send out an email. That's so sad. Dicks. But, yeah, <laughs> it's all good. Oh, well. The, uh, the person in charge has promised to buy me a dinner, so it's, it'll be okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, all is well. Um, let's talk about the meta report now. So we actually have um, the Temple Store meta report and the Data Reaper report. Um, they're actually a little bit... Of a little bit different, um, but we'll go through that real quick. Um, Nate, you want to take us through that real quick? Absolutely. Uh, so starting with Tempo Storm, we have at number one, Control Warrior. Mm -hmm. Number two, Agro Shaman. Number three, Tempo Warrior. Number four, Zulok. Uh, that rounds out tier one. And then tier two, number five, is Midrange Shaman. So if it sounds pretty identical to last week, that's because it is. The only change in the Tempo Storm meta report is that Control Warrior is now number one and used mm -hmm. to be number two, and Agro Shaman fell from number one to number two. So mm -hmm. huge changes in the Temple Storm meta report. Ginormous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to go over the Data Reaper report for us? Yeah, sounds good. So the Data Reaper report, for those of you guys who do not know, um, everyone who wants to be uh, part of this project can send in their win rates and ratios and stuff like that to um, this website, uh, Vicious Syndicate. And they'll take all the data and they'll compile it and they'll make this, these wonderful, wonderful graphs as we love here at uh, Meta Meltdown. And basically it tells us, um, I think, how many people do we have uh, this week for the Reaper report? Like thousands? There was 27,000 yeah. games reported. Yeah, so 27,000 games. Um, and that's how uh, this tier list works is they, uh, they have it backed up uh, by data and games played by players. So tier one, we have Dragon Warrior, um, Zulok, and Agro Shaman. And then tier two, we have Miracle Rogue and Cthulhu Warrior. Um, now it's interesting to note because um, the win ratios for even tier one to tier two, um, Dragon Warrior number one has a 53.9% win rate, and Cthulhu Warrior um, in tier two has a 51.4. So they're really, really close, actually. And um, even though, the, you know, we separate them by tiers, 
they're not that far off from each other. So that's something to consider. And for Cthune Warrior, it's actually tier 2 for both. Um, the Temple Storm list and the Data Reaper report. So we're playing... Cthune Druid. Cthune sorry. Druid, yes, sorry. <laughs> Cthune Druid is tier 2 for both. So we're playing a... I mean, we're not playing the best uh, deck uh, for the meta right now, but I mean, it still does really well, as we'll talk about. So um, let's introduce the deck. Nate, do you want to do that? Yeah, definitely. So this week we have Silent Storm's Rank 1 Legendary Cthune deck. So according to the Data Reaper report, before we get into the deck list, uh, Druid was played as a class overall 10% of all the games, and then Cthune Druid was played roughly 50% of those Druid games, so you could say 50% of 10% or 5% overall. So it is still pretty popular in this meta. And going over the deck list here real quick. So we have two Innervates, two Living Roots, two Raven Idols, two Wild Growth, two Wrath, two Brand... Oh, excuse me, one Brand Brown Fear. Yep. Wish we could have two of them. Uh, two Disciple of Cthune, nice. one Twilight Elder, two Swipe, two Cthune's Chosen, one Fandral Staghelm, one Claxi Amber Weaver, one Nourish, two Azure Drakes, two Druid of the Claws, one Harrison Jones, two Dark Arakoa, one Twimp Emperor... Vecklore, and obviously the staple, uh, one Cthulhu. Yep. So, pretty good deck. What do you think about it? I think it does all right. Um, I'm playing at around 7 to 10. Um, so, it's not... I, we talked about um, earlier before the before the show um, how you're always running into, um, uh, you know, shamans and warriors. Whereas, I'm running into a, a little bit more diversity. And so... Uh, I feel like the deck for me doesn't uh, work as well, um, just because like if I have Harrison Jones or something, then I can't play him on tempo, or I can't like tempo play him, or and get like a lot of value because I'm I'm playing against mages and some other classes, which um, you know I have to tweak the deck for. But I think the deck actually does fairly well uh, against most of the meta. It just isn't like you know these crazy like last week where I had like seven wins in a row, you know eight wins in a row. Um, it's definitely more 50-50 sometimes. It just kind of depends on the matchup. Right, and, and to our viewers and people that are listening, we we try not to do, uh, we try to split up the classes that we do. Mm -hmm. So we've done, you know, one warrior, um, shaman, warlock, uh, druid, priest, etc. Mm -hmm. So we we could just do warrior every week if we really wanted to, but we want to have a little bit of diversity for you guys. So yeah. that's why we did pick the best, arguably the best, uh, Druid deck. Yogg Druid is pretty good too, but we went with Cthune, Cthune since someone did hit rank one with it. Yes. Yogg is a whole nother beast. Yeah, we won't even discuss him Yogg sometime is... later though. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. So, with this deck, um, you're looking to ramp up your mana with Innervates or Wild Growths. You're looking to control the board as best as possible with um, Disciple of Cthune's, Twilight Elders, Swipes, Cthune's Chosen. Um, and then in the end game, you're looking to overpower your opponents would be creatures like Cthune and uh, Twin Embler Vecklor. Um, and yeah, if you don't draw Cthune, it's actually really hard to win matchups sometimes. But we'll talk about that. So, Nate, do you want to run us through the matchups? Yes, sir. All right. So, we have the good, the bad, and the ugly, starting with the good. So, classes that, uh, according to the Data Reaper report, that Cthune Druid beats over 55% of the time. Uh, Dragon Warrior, which we were just singing praises to, um, so it beats that. <laughs> Patron Warrior, uh, Ramp Druid, and Zulok. Mm -hmm. And then the bad, which is 35 to 45% uh, win rate against. We have Freeze Mage, Mid-Range Hunter, Pirate Warrior, Tempo Mage, and... Control Warrior. Control Warrior, yes, thank you very much. Yep. Okay, and... I just want to point out Control Warrior. Everyone thought that this was such a good deck against Control Warrior. So me, uh, I am too. So I'm really surprised to see that um, it does so poorly against Control Warrior. I'm not really sure why, but um, I guess can't really argue with stats. So yeah, I know for Control Warriors, they have a lot of board clear and stuff like that. So I'm wondering if people are either playing incorrectly or um, they're just you know being outvalued. Like, the way you want to approach control matchups, especially Control Warrior, is you want to have one or two really big um, creatures so that they have to, you know, waste, like, a brawl on one if it's too big, right? Or, um, or like, or 
or you want to get them to um, like execute your stuff really early. Um, and this deck doesn't run as many, you know, big creatures as some of the other decks. So, you know, we, while you have like Twin, twin Emperor Vecalor and C'Thun's, um, you, you don't have that many late game threats. So they can really save up a lot of their um, stuff and keep armoring up so that your C'Thun doesn't have as much um, impact. So it kind of makes sense that Control Warrior does really well against this. Um, but I can definitely see um, it's kind of a hard matchup to play as well. Yeah, the, the tank up for armor every turn is mm -hmm. kind of... It's like uh, disgustingly strong. Disheartening. Yeah. So. yeah. And then uh, lastly here, the ugly, which is uh, th below 35% win rate, is against Control Priest. So mm -hmm. um, kind of surprised with that one as well, considering all the four attack minions. It's sort yeah. of hard for Priest to clear, but again, there's like 300 games played in that category, and I think it was like 31% overall uh, win rate. So... Really odd, but again, can't argue with over 27,000 games played. Yeah. Um, so, pretty interesting stuff. And then I just want to comment on uh, what Ritual Play said in chat here. He says, I feel like there's super inconsistent draw with this deck. Sure, there's good card draw, but it feels really inconsistent. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to touch on that, Dom? Yeah, so I definitely noticed that as well. Sometimes you're dropping a lot of things and... Um, you don't have that much card draw. Like you have your card draw is um, nourish, which you almost always use as card draw um, as your Drake, and you have um, Raven Adder, which is kind of card draw. And is there anything else? I don't think so. That's about it. I mean, yeah. you can wild growth at turn ten. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So I, I do agree. There's not much. Uh, typically, this deck is more value than card draw. So you're looking on like turn six, you want to play a six drop. You know, turn seven, you want to try and play a seven drop, etc. So. It doesn't have a lot of card draw, but I think it, it sort of makes up for it. But I obviously would love to see more card draw uh, as well. But part. yeah, it's I think it's in a, a decent spot overall. Yeah. So uh, with that here, we'll discuss some of the cards that stand out to us. You want to start? Yeah. So Raven Adol is really interesting. I feel like it's it's almost like you're praising Yogg with Raven Adol. You're really hoping for an answer, um, and sometimes you're just playing it on turn one. Uh, just to get like another minion out because we don't have any turn one or two minions. You're waiting either for Bran, which you don't even really want to play, um, unless you have you know another uh, battle cry to follow up with that. Um, and Disciple of Cthulhu and Twilight Elders. So um, that's a really interesting card. I I think it's actually a really good addition and it really helps out. Um, and you actually have Living Roots too, so um, that works out. And yeah, like I said, we already talked about Nourish. Uh, I almost exclusively use it as card draw because um, you don't, you have you have other ramp in the deck, and uh, lastly, uh, Bran, which I actually really like Bran a lot. He's super useful. Um, getting two battle cries um, is amazing. Get drawing two cards with the Druid Drake, um, getting uh, the Druid of the Claw, you know, to uh, taunt up. Wait, no, no, yeah, some of the other stuff like getting our dark. Uh, Arakora to um, buff up your Cthulhu twice is like really really strong. So Bran really works out in this deck. I feel like if we could have two, I'd definitely run it. Um, what about you, Nate? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, those are pretty good cards. Uh, Raven Idol. It's I'd say it's definitely a misused card, mm -hmm. especially in the Mulligan phase. I feel like a lot of people will keep it because they say, "Oh, it's a one drop. I can use it on turn one." So. You could essentially do that, but usually you want to look for guaranteed uh, value right away, like an Innervate or Wild Growth if you don't already have it. Mm -hmm. Sure, you could use it on turn one and then draw into an Innervate, but uh, again, it's it's not nearly as likely. So th that is a pretty pretty big uh, misconception usually that people like to keep that card. So definitely if you see it on turn one or on your opening hand, get rid of it. I see. So you're, you're looking to use it more like tracking. Um, like exactly. Last week. Okay. Exactly. That makes sense. Sounds yeah. Then good. we'll move in to some honorable mention cards here. So some other cards that I've seen that I did want to discuss is Feral Rage. Um, you can use that either to help clear the board or just gain armor as a form of you know gaining health to survive a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, Meyer Keeper. It helps you ramp up, or you can use it to fill the board and kind of control the board a little bit better against uh, more aggro type decks. Beckoner of Evil, it's the uh, two drop for, or it's two three for two mana, and it also gives your Cthulhu plus two plus two, so good for anti aggro. And then if you find yourself in a little bit 
uh, more of a control type uh, meta. You can use mulch, and then you can remove some of the bigger creatures. Especially if you're in a mirror matchup and you play another Cthulhu Druid and they drop theirs first, yeah. you're not going to remove it unless you have mulch. I mean, it's just yeah, pretty no plain way. and simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, for the list that we have online, uh, we actually don't use Speculative Evil, but I definitely noticed um, there was one player who actually took out his wild growth and put in back and evil in the stack and it worked out really well for him but um kind of don't recommend that i feel like wild growth is super important to have um it really really does actually help um curve out a lot better um and you really really need to curve out with um druid decks especially this one so yeah we did just mention that and um yeah the mulch uh there's no way that uh you know you can remove big creatures um without mulch, so I have one in my deck. I can't remember what I took out for it, but it is super useful. I definitely used it a lot, um, and it's definitely pulled me out of a lot of situations as well. So, yeah. Um, let's talk about um, the mulligan phase now. So, Nate, do you want to talk about um, the aggro matchups? Sure. So, uh, there's about five cards you're looking to keep if you know that you're facing a, an aggro deck. Number one is Innervate. It's the you know, arguably the best card in the game, give you, lets you play your bigger cards earlier. So definitely keep that. Uh, Living Roots, it's uh, really good. You can either use it to remove uh, two health creatures or you can uh, fill the board up with one ones. Uh, wild Growth, it can sometimes be bad though as it can just sit in your hand if, if they're really um, laying down a lot of creatures on the board early and you can't really do anything with it. And so that can be kind of clunky sometimes. Wrath is a really good removal that you're looking for. And then Swipe, it's not good against classes such as, we'll say, Aggro Shaman just because of the three butts that they have. Mm -hmm. But if you're facing like a, a Zulok, uh, they have a lot of uh, one health minions, so it's really good against mm -hmm. them. But I wouldn't necessarily save Swipe, especially if you don't have coin. Yeah, those Dark Rituals. Like, I love swiping Dark Rituals. There's so much value. It's like one of the best feelings with this deck. Agreed. Yep. And then, and then what about... What, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then for control, um, you're looking to innervate out big creatures early. Um, you're looking to get living roots out in, in order to play that early on. And yeah, ramping up is super important with this deck too. So whether you get, you know, wild growths and then moving on into, you know, your azure drakes, um, druid of the claws, um, and wrath is really useful too because um, for, like, Warrior matchups, you really want to get rid of those um, early 1-3s. Uh, and, yeah, that's about it for the control matchup. You really just, for, for both for both uh, aggro and uh, control, you're really just trying to ramp out and um, play on curve. Um, I think Kriparian was talking about how, um, I think with this deck, you really just want to uh, play the minions sometimes. Like, sometimes it's really important to just play, play your cards and then hope that they don't have the removal because, um, like, you really want to, you really need to be um, playing like on the forefront uh, as opposed to like trying to um, get back into the game because there's not too many cards in this deck that allow you to, you know, uh, pull yourself back into the game. So that's why you're really looking to curve out. Yeah, exactly. You need that initiative. You want to be laying the, the big creatures first before your opponents to go essentially. Yep, definitely. And that's actually going to wrap it up for this week. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching and downloading our podcast. Shout out to Ritual Plays, who's been moderating our Twitch chat. Um, thank you again for showing up every week. And you, again, you can find the deck list online at metameltdown.com. Um, we'd actually like you to tweet out um, deck suggestions. Um, but next week, we're actually going to talk about Dragon Warrior. So um, after next week, we'd like to you know take some user suggestions, um, viewer suggestions. And uh, we'll do some of those decks. Um, yeah, you can tweet us at Silver Dragon, at Meta Meltdown, and at Nate Diggity Seven, if that's correct. Yes, sir. And uh, a change for next week: we're going to be online on Thursday at 7 p.m. PST um, at Twitch.tv/Meta Meltdown. Um, so please join us for that if you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast. And you can find us on Twitter at the Meta Meltdown. Uh, our YouTube is the Meta Meltdown, and our email, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, we'd love to hear them, um, metameltdownpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, so tune in next week. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye, guys.